Welcome to Here We Are, Brattleboro's community talk show. I'm Wendy O'Connell, and here we are again in our Zoom studio, and I'm so glad today. On our show, we have Nancy Heidinger. In 1999, Nancy founded the very mighty Girls on the Run Vermont program. She was executive director there until last year. She served on, she served on many, many boards locally and received many awards over the year, including the Brattleboro Chamber of Commerce Person of the Year, the Girls on the Run National Legacy Award and the Community Leadership Award from the President's Council on Fitness and Health. She's certainly been around. These are just a very few. It's a tip of the iceberg of the things that she's done in our town. Nancy recently returned to the world of banking, joining Brattleboro Savings and Loans Mortgage Lending Team as a mortgage loan originator. She'll talk to us about what that actually is. Nancy is certainly a champion in the awards and in the appreciation she's received, yes, but that's also because she champions others to go for their own gold. Thanks, Nancy, for being with us today. We're very glad to have you. Hi, Wendy. Hi. Thank you for having uh, me. It's, it's wonderful to have you on. And, you know, I know that you, as, as I just said, you've been busy for the last 20 years doing Girls on the Run, which is a fantastic program that we're going to talk about. And, um, and you're going to give us a little backstory, too, which I think will be great because so many of us know about Girls on the Run, but not a lot of the history in it. And, um, uh, you know, I was thinking um, coming in today to do the show that one of the, it seems like one of the core things in everything you do is advocacy. And whether it's being on the Red Cross board or United Way or all of these other things that you're involved in, you're advocating um, for various groups, various individuals. Um, and I think sometimes advocacy is sort of built into how you were brought up or your environment or culture or what you studied, et cetera. It's a broad subject, but could you talk a little about that? No doubt. And you're right. I think I want to champion everyone in, that I meet. I want everyone to be a champion in their own mind and in their own place. Yes. And that's what fills me. So that's, I think that's a priority in my life. And it's not that I think about it every day. It's just who I've evolved into. And I probably, like you said, when when we're growing up, it starts when you're when we're really young and who we are and who we how we develop and the experiences that we have. And um, if I go back there to my young life when I was um, in a large family of seven children, I had three older brothers and three younger sisters, and we were a very athletic family. Um, we were probably the popular family in town for their, my father was an athlete, my grandfather was an athlete, my brothers were athletes. And um, so my mom and dad had three boys and then they got pregnant, you know, she was pregnant for her fourth. And they said, well, what are we gonna do if it's a girl? And they decided they would name their daughter if she was a girl after Miss America. So sure enough, um, Nancy Fleming was Miss America that year. And so I was named Nancy. Nancy Ann Fleming and I'm Nancy, I was Nancy Ann Lahart. So that's a funny story, but, and, and that's like how it was when I, it was kind of a chauvinistic time growing up and my brothers got to play sports with my, my dad and was coached by them and they were fantastic athletes. And then it was me and my three younger sisters. And it was different for us. You know, we helped my mom with things. We weren't a priority and, you know, we, we didn't need to do anything. And that, that was how I felt. I didn't need to do anything. Um, my role as a girl was to be cute and pretty and nice and kind. And so I, a people pleaser, you know, and um, there were other issues with my family. And so, which made me kind of lose my voice and lose my place. And in fifth grade, I remember we had to do an oral report. You asked if I like to do public speaking. Um, no. And I got up and I did want to, my report was on Tony Canigliaro. He was 
a baseball player that got hit in the eye with a baseball. And so that was my book. And I did this great visual aid, big poster of all these things so that when I got up in front of the class, I could show the poster instead of talking. But when she called me, the teacher called me up. I'll never forget her. And she said, you know, I, I went up there and I just stood there. I froze and couldn't say a word. And she said, okay, Nancy, come on. And I just froze. And she just said, take a seat, Nancy. Mm -hmm. And that's when I think I really took a seat. Mm -hmm. And um, I didn't, I didn't do much. You know, I just went along. I did play basketball because it was expected in my family. And that was good. That was a good thing. Um, and I started running a little bit. Mm -hmm. And that's the one thing that I think gave me um, some confidence that I could do it. And it was two miles, but that was great. It was something I did that my brothers didn't, well, they did do it, <laughs> but my sisters didn't do it. <laughs> um, and as it turned out, my sisters were pretty smart. My brothers were very athletic and smart. And here I am in the middle. Mm -hmm. So I'm developing my people skills mm -hmm. and how can I be noticed and how, and that was like in those days, Barbie beauty, you know, like skinny, pretty to get attention. And that's what I did. And that's kind of why after I had children, I love my job. I was a banker prior to starting Girls on the Run. Then I had my daughters and I did not want them to have, I didn't want them to grow up like I did. Right, right, right. Yeah. Yeah. So much of it is cultural. You know, during that time, you were growing up in the 60s and 70s, you know, and I was growing up a decade before that. And um, there were things that girls, we played field hockey. That was it pretty much for sports. You know, there was so little available. So so it does sound like um, something was generated in you uh, to realize that that if you had if you had had a mentor, for instance, things wow. probably would have been different. Yeah. You know, someone to champion you in some, any way at all. That's exactly right. That is ex a mentor. And, you know, my mother was fantastic, but she was so busy. Yes. You know? um, and a mentor would have made a big difference. Yeah. And instead, I had a boyfriend, you know, that I tried to please and all that. So, mm -hmm. you know, it just, it's the kind of looking back on it, my experiences were wonderful experience, you know, my experiences, which made me who I am, which make, you know, makes me proud that I could evolve and grow out of it and help other people, yes. other girls. The thing about running too, um, I think is there weren't many kids running. There weren't many people running during that time, but you get a payoff right away, right? You do. I mean, you just get this when you're finished, there's no better feeling. You know, it changes your mood. It changes your day. It changes how you feel about yourself. Um, so it's such a gift to be able to run. And yeah. it is a gift. Also going along with advocacy, um, uh, you, you got a degree in teaching. So you were planning on going in that direction. And uh, at some point when you were in Vermont, um, you, you, were, uh, you did a literacy program in Vernon. Right. Um, yes. And, and my, all my kids were at Vernon Elementary School at the time and they were just starting literacy programs. So I started the literacy program in Vernon uh -huh. um, and it was great. And I, I was only there for a year and a half and it was while Girls on the Run was beginning and evolving. Mm. And then it really took off. And so I had, I gave up the teaching. Yeah. And Girls on the Run then became your full-time job. It did. Yeah. yeah. Probably you weren't expecting that. No, I wasn't. And the first few years, you know, is a lot of um, at-home work, you know, at home. Tom's supporting me and Tom, my husband. Mm -hmm. um, and all the way. Yeah. And, you know, investing, investing, investing. And then we finally got an office up in Brattleboro. And then we we put on our own 5Ks for the girls, which is after the 10 week program. Uh, um, then they participate and complete a 5K event, which is their goal from the beginning of the season on. And Tom's the one that put all those 5Ks together in Brattleboro and Rutland and Burlington. Mm -hmm. 
And all of our kids have been involved all these years, whether they wanted to or not, as far as helping out when they got older. And my daughter, Katie, has been a Girls in the Ring coach. And um, Caroline does a lot of marketing for us. And Tommy was our beef for the 5K to 5K to um, do all the moving, oh, lots of moving. <laughs> Can you give us a little backstory on Girls on the Run? I know that I think it started in Washington, D.C. It started in Charlotte, North Carolina mm-hmm. in 1996 by Molly Barker and it, her story of running and how it changed her life. Mm-hmm. And so she came up with this curriculum um, in the beginning. it was, And I was one of her first um, sites or first councils. Mm-hmm. And so back in, it was actually 1999 that I went down to Molly's house to get trained. It was that new. And, you know, she was there with her little kids and we did the training. We took the kids, the kids to the doctor. It was so grassroots at the time. Yeah. And you could have a six week curriculum. You could do anything. And, but the curriculum is all about, um, you know, it's based on three things. One is yourself, you know, taking care of yourself. What's important to you, who you are, what your values are, like really examining as a third and fourth and fifth year old girl, like what's important to you. And then after that, you concentrate on teamwork and Mm -hmm. um, value, you know, values related to teamwork. Mm -hmm. And then it's all about community building Mm -hmm. and how you can shape the world. You know, a girl can shape the world. So that's how the curriculum is broken up. Mm -hmm. And there are, you know, lesson plans that we asked our trained coaches to follow to the T because there's a purpose to every single thing in the lesson. Yes. And this, this is starting with third and fourth graders. Yes, third, fourth, and fifth grade. I just think it's so astounding, you know, like those, um, someone recently was talking about a three-legged stool and the three things that hold an organization together. And those three things, to become aware of them in third and fourth grade is illuminating. It's incredible. Yeah. You know, like how to make decisions, like thinking about making intentional decisions. Yeah. How does one lesson is stop and take a breather? Like stop, think, you know, breathe think, respond, and review. Mm-hmm. They practice that all the time. They, they talk about it in school, how to, let's take a breather. Um, that's when, you know, you may have peer pressure. Mm-hmm. Um, other lessons are, uh, real beauty is one of my favorite ones. And it's about, I actually did a little video on this where, you know, what is, what is real beauty? And you'll ask the girls, to, the girls will be in a circle standing on a piece of paper and you'll say to them, who has seen a beautiful sunset? And if they have, they run from one paper to another one, you know, around the circle. Mm -hmm. Who has seen a beautiful pizza? (laughs) Or, you know, different things like that. And then you talk about beauty. Can you really tell a person's character by their outside, you know, physical characteristics? And then we start talking about, you know, what else is, makes something beautiful? Mm -hmm. And I got up in the video and I said, I am beautiful. And that's because we, we would fill out a card. And you would, this is like the running activity. The girl would have a piece of paper with all these um, honesty, funny, a good friend, a good listener. And you'd run to your coat at the other end and you'd write somebody's name in that was honest. And then you'd run back and you'd write somebody's name that's funny and, or, you know, a good listener or a good friend. And so you know, I looked at the card and I was like, I'm all these things. And so I can say, I can truly say I'm a beautiful person. Mm -hmm. So it's learning beauty in a different way. Yes. Um, There's so and there's so many fantastic lessons. It's like finding your happy pace in life, like not in running, but in life. Untangling your emotions and and all of this is communicated through games. You know, Mm -hmm. running games. Right. Yes. And I I think that's really exciting. I think it's a wonderful way to learn. I've, I've talked to several folks on the show. Um, about the pandemic and the changes that have happened in the pandemic and learning and going to school or not going to school. And so many things are, are up in the air right now or people are experimenting in so many different ways. Well, so now, yeah, um, and Girls in the Run is so on top of that. And they've got a at-home kits where they have like 50 activities and booklets, physical activities and exercises exercises in not just exercising, but, um, learning and talking about struggles and talking about those kind of things mm-hmm. with parents guided, you know, guided with parents, girls on the run international. It does an, a fantastic 
job in staying up to date um, and has proud to have reached 2 million girls so far. And this is going to be Girls and Run Internationals, which is in Charlotte, 25th year. Mm -hmm. And we're going to have on March 25th, our annual um, meeting, which we can't get together. So it'll be on Zoom, but Hoda will speak for speak there. So sh that will be fun. Mm -hmm. um, it's just such a, it's a wonderful community, Girls on the Run. It sounds just like an amazing community. Not only that, but the fact that um, you are coming together, you are international, you are able to come together. And because perhaps maybe because of the pandemic, you are going to be close, more closely united with people in other countries, which is exciting. But also as a model for learning and becoming a human being. Yes, it really is. I mean, it's a physical activity youth development program yes. um, that's highly recognized and um, you know our our curriculum development person as our PhD and our MSW and curriculum evaluation programming exercise science um, so we really have top-notch people everyone in Vermont supports girls on the run it's Department of Education Department of Health Blue Cross Blue Shield Vermont um, the, so many people support our organization and our coaches raise money so the girls don't have to pay a lot. Mm -hmm. Our girls raise money for other girls and they raise a hundred thousand dollars per year for other girls to participate. So we're successful because our community and our states okay. embraces the program. Yeah. So yes, we're the longest standing, um, financially secure healthy with sponsors, healthy with coaches, have served 45,000 girls. Wow. So we have a lot to be proud of in Vermont. A lot to be proud of, and, and again, and as a model, um, but also as just an incredibly wholesome educational piece to it too, you know, that just builds community. You can see how it builds community, yes. right? Like kids that you had at the beginning are now in their 20s or 30s, right? Yes. And they're coaching and, and it, yeah, it's fantastic. You should, I could talk all, you gotta stop me, I think. Well, it's great. I, it's the kind of thing, you know, one wishes one had in, in her life. You know? Exactly. And that's what all the coaches say. Yeah. Our coaches are, um, I'd say half educators. Many, many of them are teachers. Mm -hmm. um, we even have school principals and, and then moms and dads and community members. Mm -hmm. I know it's wide ranging. You've got it. There's no politics involved here. Right? Not at all. Right. You have also you you were or are part of the all women's Boston Marathon team. I was. Um, so that was in 2017. Highlands mm -hmm. is homeopathic. Oh, yes. Come um, on. I was sponsored by Highlands, oh. and the reason is that Highlands had you brought on 12 women for that 50th anniversary of a woman um, running who had like a story or an overcoming something. Oh. So that's how I was chosen. And my story was that in 2000, I had a couple of things. In 2013, I participated in the Boston Marathon and that mm -hmm. was when the year of the bombing. Mm -hmm. So um that was quite an emotional event. And especially because my daughter Caroline was running also. Mm. And she ran, she was ahead of me by a half an hour or 45 minutes. And when I got to the finish line, that's when the bomb went off. So I knew what had happened. And I was right there and somebody had said, are there fireworks or something? And I looked and I saw this cloud of smoke like it was like the 9-11 towers almost, you know, on a smaller scale. I was like, that's, no, somebody said, did somebody, a cannon, was it a cannon? And I was like, that is not a cannon. So I started running to try to find Caroline and people didn't really know what was happening, but you could, the fire trucks were coming through and I, you know, this is getting off topic, but anyway, I found Caroline and we found our way out eventually, you know, and so that was that was that. And um, I was able to finish it and that was great. And it was important to me to go back next year to support Boston because the way um, the, the race director and the city handled that emergency was unbelievable. 
And I wanted to go back and support it. And so the second year, that next year, I didn't get in because you have to qualify to get in. Mm -hmm. And so then the next year I didn't get in. You know, I don't know what was going, you know, I, I had run seven of them before, but the last, you know, those three years, I, I just wasn't able to run fast enough or, or I don't know what it was. And then one day I was running and I, I was feeling a little dizzy and I can remember being at the track. We do track workouts with Hank Lang on Tuesday mornings yeah. and doing, um, he, we always do stretches and when we're doing the stretches and I couldn't balance and I was getting so mad. And I was like, I have to go back to yoga. And so, and then at times running around the track, I would kind of bump into someone mm-hmm. and be like, sorry, you know, like getting into your personal space, but not thinking anything of it. And then one day I was at a race in Maine and I kind of fell forward at the end. And then two weeks later, I was out on Route 30 running with my running friends and I fell. So I went to the doctor and got an MRI and got a call back later that day saying to get to the emergency room that I had a really large brain tumor, Mm. like right back here. Mm. So it made sense, (laughs) you know, so luckily it was, we got it, you know, we got it out. It went to Boston. Um, got it all, all good. Um, but then it made sense why I was dizzy and falling down and bumping into people. And so then Highlands came along and said, you know, we would like you to be in the marathon. You know, we're going to give you an opportunity because of your experience to participate in the Boston Marathon in 2018. Mm -hmm. So because of my story, I got to do it and it was fantastic. What they had me do is every week I had to do something and post it on Facebook to my friends about, you know, gratitude or what beauty, you know, what is this? Or, you know, take your running shoe and what does it mean to you? And, you know, to, so people could follow the story and be motivated. So we started a Facebook group and like we had 180 women on it. Wow. Um, and it's still going. It's slowed way down. Mm-hmm. but that was pretty cool. And yeah. so we would get together and go for walks on the marina path or jogs or, and it doesn't have to be running. Well, there's so many um, that I know, my friend Lois Sparks, women's groups, they go hiking, they go, we go, or, you know, the biking group, there's the running group, the biking group, the hiking group. There are so many um, community, um, the Red Rover Clover Clover <laughs> running club that tries to bring people together. And it's all about just getting outside and being together and right. fresh air. That's right. And it's one thing that we are able to do to a certain degree these days during the pandemic. And I think I, I know that I put on more mileage in the last nine months than ever. That's so um, great. I know. And it's just because, you know, we're hungry for social and we're hungry for endorphins. Yes. And, yeah. fresh air and nature. And I think nature has been such a big support for us as well. And, you know, as we age, there's the fast, you know, when you're young, you might be, you know, faster and more intense and more competitive. And it's what's been wonderful about Brattleboro is I started on that Tuesday morning running group when I, you know, 35 years ago or something and how we're all staying together and evolving in in different snowshoeing and walking and with our dogs and biking and we're yeah. pretty lucky to have this community. It's amazing. Yeah, and that's those are lifelong relationships. They are. I mean, you've been here 35 years, right? You know, and these are people that you've known and that you you are, you know, growing older with in so many different kinds of ways. It's really there's one great thing about growing older is that the connections that one has and the appreciation that comes with getting older. Definitely, definitely. And, and you know, and as far as women go. Women are supporting each other so much more than they did in the past. Mm -hmm. And and I think that shows strength of confidence. I think, you know, women are more open and want to see women succeed. Um, And it's versus when I, 20 or 30 years ago, you know. Yes. And again, you know, learning it young makes a really big difference. You know, learning the value of that and seeing yourself reflected back too. Um, So uh, during this time of COVID, um, 
we've, we've, we keep hearing that there's a housing boom going on in Vermont. And you, as a mortgage, um, being in the mortgage business at Brattle Rose Savings and Loan, are you seeing this as a reality? Yes, um, absolutely. And I've only been back in since September, but it's been crazy. Mm -hmm. um, oh, the realtors are so busy. The mortgage um, people here are so busy and they're working so hard. So I came in to help. Mm -hmm. And, you know, what I'm hearing from the real, the, the inventory is low. A house will go on the market and there'll be five buyers for it immediately. It's incredible. Um, and Broadmoor Savings Loan, like I couldn't, I hit the jackpot. Like the most amazing community bank we're a B corporation. And if people don't know what a B corporation is, it's like, it's balancing purpose with profit. Mm -hmm. So we have to take into consideration as we want to, um, the environment, our community needs, our, the people that we work with. Mm -hmm. um, so, and, and it's a, not an easy de designation to get. I mean, we worked, it took us a year to get it, but we're definitely the first bank in Vermont, but maybe the first bank in the country. I, um, to have that designation. So it's pretty awesome. And, you know, Dan Yates, the most amazing leader, um, involved in so many community um, projects and organizations and BCTV, a Broadway Savings Alone. Um, so pretty lucky. And yes, I'd say the business is booming. <laughs> Mortgage business is booming. How do you feel about that as a Vermonter, as a local, and as a banker? Okay, so I want to embrace it. I want to say these people are coming in because they want to be here. Mm -hmm. And I think they can help us. Mm -hmm. I think they can get involved with our downtown, with our museum, with our, all these nonprofits. I, I think they're here because they want to be here. And I feel like they're, they're going to want to be community members. Not everybody, but... So that's my take on it. And I know that's probably not everybody's take on it, but I think it's good for us. You know, it's a great attitude to have. Instead of seeing people coming into one's territory as interlopers, as being able to be incorporated into the community and helping them do that as well. And I, you know, when I first came to Vermont and I worked at Merchants Bank and you could tell, like, and they said, they knew I was not a Vermonter and you didn't get quite the warm welcome. Mm -hmm. back then I don't think yeah. but I, I don't know I, I that's a I'd like to hear other perspectives on it but I, I'm sure. hoping yeah. you know feeling pretty positive and you know as far as bringing business and even money into our area that's absolutely, absolutely. and new takes on things new outlooks new perspectives as well I think it's great no matter what for anybody in any moment to be positive about what's going on right now, right? Yes. <laughs> yeah. the positivity. And it, it's and it's hard to be positive sometimes, but there's always something to be grateful for. That's right. Something. Yeah. yeah. It is. Well, I am grateful that you came on the show today. Thank you, Wendy. It's Thank really you. thanks for having me. It's been fun. We do want to do another shout out to Brattleboro Savings and Loan because they have been such stalwart supporters of BCTV and, um, and therefore the community. So we, we give a hearty thanks to Brattleboro Savings and Loan. Um, we're glad you're on board with them and going along with their mission about um, uh, social responsibility and community impact. Um, and uh, yeah. Thank you for being such a great advocate and such a, a wonderful, a wonderful source here in our community, Nancy. And let me just say, yes. everyone that works here at Broadway Sings Alone is amazing. That's good to know. And it truly feels like a family. So I that's a great thing to be able to say about a bank. It's true too. That's <laughs> yeah. so great. Thanks, Nancy. Thank you, Wendy. Yes, we'll see you around town and we can see each other around town. Sounds great. And thanks to all of you viewers out there. We're so glad that you're with us again. We are a weekly show. Um, we always have someone new from the community coming on. So stay tuned and stay with us. Keep in touch. We'll see you next week. Thanks. Thanks.